My name is Max Rosbelli. I was born in Germany to a strict Orthodox Jewish family. As the oldest son, my father wished that I would become a rabbi, but I felt I would rather go into medicine. And so I studied medicine at the University of Heidelberg. After graduation, a number of years later, I emigrated to the United States and settled in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. A number of years after that, a war broke out between the northern and southern states. As a citizen of Louisiana, I felt it was my duty to join the Confederacy. But as much as the Confederacy needed doctors, they needed spies more. And so I was sent to Washington, D.C. to gather information about Union troop movements. And so I spent the first year of the war in that way. And you might ask, as I did, why send a German doctor to be a spy? Well, in the North, there are many immigrant groups, and a German accent blended in with the many others. And as a doctor, I could travel anywhere in the city, any time of the day or night, and arouse no suspicions. And a doctor's bag can be a convenient place to hide things that need not to be seen. Uh, after a time, uh, the opportunity came for me to join the Union Army. And I felt uh, if my position were to gather information about the Army, what better way than to be a part? And so I became a surgeon in the US Volunteers. Uh, then in the summer of 1863, uh, the Northern Army and Southern Army uh, met at a small Pennsylvania crossroads town called Gettysburg. And for three days, the two armies tried to destroy one another with great effect. At the end of the battle, more than 50,000 men were killed or wounded. Uh, my job as a surgeon was, was unending. It was on the first day of the battle that I met Charlie Coulson. He was a 17-year-old drummer boy. Uh, I could tell at once that amputation was necessary, uh, but he refused to chloroform. He said that if he died, he wanted to be ready to meet his savior. Uh, this didn't make sense to me. Uh, but he promised if I didn't give him the chloroform, he wouldn't even groan during the operation. Well, as I began the operation, he, he kept his word. But when I took the saw to separate the bone, I, I could see him grasp the edge of the table. He, he took a corner of the pillow in his mouth and I could hear him saying softly, Jesus, blessed Jesus, stand by me now. Dear Jesus, stand by me now. Well, uh, his operation was over and uh, another man was sitting in his place uh, and another and another for hours. Uh, finally, I was so exhausted, I, I couldn't even hold a scalpel in my hand. I, I had to get some rest. Uh, I went to my tent, but as exhausted as I was, uh, I couldn't sleep. All I could see was that boy's blue eyes and I could hear him saying, Jesus, stand by me now. <laughs> 